God bless you. Uh, praise God for you. So glad that uh, I have this opportunity to share uh, what the Spirit of God has put on my heart to share with you, to uh, arm you with information so you can pray and you can prayerfully move through what it is God has been putting on my heart and brought back to my attention today. So it's been uh, several months really dating back to September of 2021. The Lord began to speak to me about the global economy. And uh, this morning was reading the news and the Lord prompted me to come on and to remind you some things and also tell you that the tremors that we've experiencing are not, uh, are not indicative of things being over, that there is more shaking coming to the economy. The Lord has been showing such great mercy, uh, giving us insight that things are coming without the, the rug being pulled up from under us. And so we give you thanks for that, Lord. So here's what I want to share with you uh, this morning. So I was reading about the Hang Seng in Hong Kong and how in Hong Kong uh, that market has officially entered into a bear market. It's now more than 20% lower than its previous peak. And so this is uh, evidence of a downturn uh, at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange called the Hang Seng. Uh, we've also heard recently in recent days, we have instituted interest rate and uh, they have done so to the tune of more than uh, 3%. Uh, and it is, um, historical. They haven't seen hikes like this in decades. And so I'm reading about these things and, and the Lord began to prompt me to share this with you, that he is concerned about the global economy, the global economy. And the Lord is, he's telling me he's dedicated to rooting out corruption and exposing corruption. There are business leaders, the Lord spoke to me, who are corrupt and the Lord is going to replace them. We've seen some of this already in the American banks that have closed and there was some exposure there of some questionable business practices at some of those banks and within the cryptocurrency sector. But that is really just the beginning. God is just getting started. He is looking to, in fact, transfer more influence and wealth to people of righteousness, his people who he knows will operate in righteousness. And so here's what the Lord showed me. Dating back several months, he showed me a reset. Business leaders, CEOs, and others being replaced and even wiped out of the finance industry. And there's something simply not right in the tech industry that the Lord wants to correct. He's weighing the American economy on a scale, and he is coming to bring judgment to it. Today, it was the Hong Kong Hang Seng market that entered into a bear market. Uh, this is going to send its own measure of shockwaves to the global economy. Uh, we know that uh, China is suffering through a, a, a serious housing slump and they've been having serious issues with debt. Their economy has been lagging. It has been lagging. In a global economy like we have today, what happens in one nation shudders through the entire system because there's so much interconnection. So what's going on in Hong Kong and China, what's going on in Russia, they're going to have ripple effects throughout the world. And so the Lord... Um, is telling me that what we've seen so far in the global economy really has just been tremors. And there's going to be a more pronounced drop and a recovery after that pronounced drop. Now I'm gonna take you into a dream the Lord showed me that really demystifies what is going on. And he sent me to explain what he is doing so you understand his mind and his heart. The Lord showed me angels that are assigned to monitor stock markets and uh, these angels told me the Lord was coming to inspect the market. But before he showed up to inspect it, let me see, tell you what he saw. I saw I saw a screen that was showing the state of the market. The market was, and I'm talking about the global economy, was just chugging right along. And then I saw a clock that was assigned to the market that was moving too fast. And it indicated the market was just too hot. It was growing too fast and it no longer represented an accurate depiction of what the value is of the market, the global market. So what's so interesting is before the Lord showed up to inspect, I was given access to change the clock so that it wouldn't be fast and it wouldn't be going too fast. And this is so important that we say this. The Lord, I believe, wants us to pray for a market correction so that he can visit it and find it in perfect sync with the truth. And I also think the Lord has assigned the church, people of God, to be influential and be part of the solution so that the Lord will find the stock market to be just, to be fair, 
for there to be no double standards. So I was given access. I believe that represents the body of Christ, given access to what? To wealth, to markets, to influence in the finance industry, to decision making tables. Glory to God. Uh, and I believe the way this is going to happen is the Lord's going to remove those who so far have not been well stewarding their influence in the global economy. And so I believe that access to the clock represents how the Lord is going to bring people in his church into greater influence and what we touch will become his righteousness. This is what we have to understand that when we're walking with the Lord, we are his ambassadors. And so when we enter into some of these tables, uh, some of these discussions, where people are beginning to get access to certain um, measures of wealth, we are actually agents of grace, agents of the Holy Spirit, agents of the kingdom of God, and that that is bringing righteousness to that sector. Uh, after, after I sought to fix this clock in the dream, there was a flash that represented a, a, a transition and it depicted um, a black screen. Everything went black. And then there was suddenly a flurry of headlines about the economy. And these flurries were saying that the entire global economy, the entire economic system was changing. That was the news. And so I was continuing to work on the clock as this transition was happening. So I believe the body of Christ is going to be coming into greater influence before this happens and during. And so there's going to be this transition. It's going to be sudden. It is going to have a changing, a transitional effect. It's going to progressively transform the global economy. And there will be people of God that are going to have access as we pray to tables and places of influence and to capital. And so I began, uh, I continued, in fact, to work on this clock that was connected to the economy and making sure that it was properly timed and in sync with the true value. So it was being synced. The clock was being synced with the truth. And I knew by the spirit that this transition, this correction was happening over the course of one cycle, one cycle, not one year, but one cycle. So this entire cycle of change is going to be about bringing righteousness and, and, and balance to the system. It's going to take time for the Lord to send his people into greater influence and access in the finance industry. But this thing is happening. It's going to happen. And I, I want you to understand because of the, of the nature of what I saw as I was making this uh, change to the clock, I also recognized that it wasn't easy and it wasn't smooth. And this transition is going to have its bumps. It's going to have its, its ups and its downs but it's going to bring out uh, God's perfect plan. It's going to bring his perfect purpose into manifestation. Really what the Lord wanted to get me to tell you really that, that will help you is he is overall concerned with your security. The spirit of God wants the market to be a safe place for your investment. Many of us are trained and told 401ks, mutual funds, uh, ETFs, all, the, uh, all these things. But but if they're not truly uh, if they're not truly depicting their value, we're being sw we're being sl um, swindled to a degree. We're being told it's worth this, but it's really not worth that. And so the spirit of the Lord is very concerned about that. He wants justice in the economy for your good, for your good. The word of the Lord in Proverbs eleven one says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. God is spewing out. False balance, meaning when things are dishonest, when there's deception, God hates it. It's an abomination, meaning he doesn't even want to be near it. It is that bad. Proverbs 16, 11 says, the Lord demands accurate scales and balances. He sets the standards for fairness. Do you see why the Lord wants this to be? It is his delight for things to be fair, to be accurate. It says the Lord demands accurate scales. What do scales represent? Scales represent you weighing something for an accurate depiction of what, it, what it's worth, for its value. And so when you're buying a stock, you're being told it's worth 20 bucks. You, you want to have assurance that this thing is going to hold its value because there isn't any hidden gaps or there aren't any machinations going on in the economy that are boosting or juicing the value of that stock, and you're being set up for it to drop 50%. So God's bringing correction to this, and he's doing so through people. He's going to replace certain people. He's going to bring righteousness to companies. He's going to bring righteousness to systems and boardrooms, glory to God, and finance companies, glory to God. Proverbs 20.10 says, false weights and unequal measures the Lord detests 
double standards of every kind. So what the Lord is saying here is anytime there's dishonesty in the in terms of value and there's a, a, a mischaracterization of how much something really is worth, that that actually sets up a double standard. The person who's presenting it as uh, worth a certain thing, but but it's not actually worth what they're presenting it. That's a double standard. That person is at an advantage over the person who doesn't know the true value of what it is. And see, so do you understand why the Lord, our righteousness, wants to be involved in the stock market? He wants to make sure that those who are portraying that their company is worth a certain value don't have an advantage over those who are actually purchasing their company and who are actually causing their company to succeed and grow. He does not want you to be manipulated into buying stocks and bonds and securities and they don't represent the accurate value of what they claim. It is an abomination to God. It is an abomination. Proverbs 20, 23 says, the Lord detests double standards. I love it. He is not pleased by dishonest scales. He detests it. So what we see here is the Lord is demanding a just measure in the economy. That means he is requiring those who sell to accurately depict the value of what they're selling. And that includes stocks. He's demanding a just measure and he's requiring those who sell to accurately depict the value of what they're selling. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I need you to pray with me. I need you to pray with me. Here's four points of prayer. Four points of prayer. Pray for, pray for the Lord to bring justice to the global economy. Wow. To take, take care of the double standards and the inaccuracies the measures that are not accurate. Number two, pray with me to protect the financial well-being of everyday men and women. Number three, pray for a righteous economic correction that brings God glory. And number four, pray for the Lord to replace, rather pray for the Lord to place people with Daniel, Abraham, and Joseph spirits in the global economy, to govern the global economy according to the Spirit of God. Now watch what God brought to my attention in the book of Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 2, it says, Abraham took a tenth of all he had captured in battle and gave it to Melchizedek. Listen to this. The righteous man had been blessed and he still caused, he still was determined to honor the Lord with his increase. This is what needs to be found in the economy. People who will honor the Lord with their increase. See, we don't think there's com there's any consequences. A company makes all this money and they're not doing anything for Jesus. No, no, no. There are consequences for that. There is wickedness inherently in a company that is not honoring the Lord with their money. And so let's just say it. The global economy is Babylon. It's a Babylonian system. It does not honor the Lord. And so the Lord has to deal with it. And he deals with it by bringing the people of righteousness into it. He says, Abraham took a tenth of all he captured. He was a righteous man. And he gave it to Melchizedek, a man who was a priest. He was the king of justice. He was the king of Salem. He represented Jesus, but he is not a believer. He was not following God. And so listen to this. Melchizedek represents those who we need to be influencing in the economy, who are, who are operating as rulers in the economy, but they need to come in contact with those who honor the Lord with their increase. Why? Because in verse 6 of Hebrews 7, listen to this. It says, Melchizedek placed a blessing on Abraham the one who had already received the promises of God. So there are promises being held up. There are promises of abundance and blessing and prosperity, financial blessing and financial prosperity that are being held up because wicked people have too much influence in the market. And so the Lord's going to bring righteousness by, th by bringing righteous people into the market. And those righteous people are going to change the culture and they're going to cause those who have been in rulership and stewardship of the financial market who are not Christ followers to begin to bless God's people. This is what you have to understand. There are times, just like Pharaoh, when, when the enemy uh, even has to begin to bless people. Why? Because it's the goodness of God and his correction that combine to be a blessing to his people. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for those who what? Love him. Glory to God. He says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. It is literally the wicked who are storing up what belongs to God's people. And there are times of release. 
And I'm praying into your spirit right now that you will understand if you're rightly positioned, if you're honoring God with your increase, you're giving your tithes as an organization, you're giving your tithes as a family, as an individual, as a young person, as a single person, there is a blessing, there is a reward. What does the Bible say? Given it shall be given to you. Pressed down, shaken together, shall men give into your bosom. We've experienced it in our own home. We've seen people give and we know that God is behind it. And I'm here to preach to your spirit right now that you can receive the prophet's reward, that you can receive a gift from the word of God that comes through faith. That if you're if you're open and have a capacity to believe that you can be as the woman at Zarephath who had a prophet show up in her house and she thought she was going to have to make one last meal and die. And the prophet said to her, give me first a cake and then feed yourself and your son. And it says that the oil and the flour did not run out. They had enough in a famine land. Oh, give God glory. Even in the midst of a downturn in the economy, the blessings of God will overtake you. I proclaim this into your hearing and I pray that you mix it with faith. It's time for you to begin to see who you are in Christ Jesus. He says he has laid up the wealth of the wicked for you. He says that I will give you from the treasury of heaven. He says that uh, everything that you need, he is it. I am. He is, I am in your life. He is the Lord who prospers you. Glory to God. Now, this is not about (laughs) building more barns and storing it up. No, it is to be freely received and then freely given. It's to inject a fresh flow of the righteous economy of God into the earth. What do we know about the kingdom? The kingdom of God is a place where there are resources that cannot be abated. They cannot be measured. And the Lord tells us to pray that his will on earth be done as it is in heaven. And so there's access to the resources, the the source himself and the resources that he gives into the hands of his people that God wants to open up because he's been seeing this disparity and this, this gap growing between the wealthy and those who are not wealthy, the wealthy and those who are at the bottom rung. Oh my goodness, we've never seen it like the way it is now. We've seen a wealth amassed, but we've never seen the middle class struggling like this in our lifetime. Glory to God. Our generation has not seen the middle class struggling with the inflation. Come on. And child care. Let's not even get to that. Groceries. Listen, things are going up and and people are trying to make ends meet. And some folks aren't even working because they'd rather get on public assistance to make it easier. There's such an imbalance in the economy. And God wants to inject the righteousness of God through his people into the economic system in order order to influence the culture and cause the culture to cough up the blessings that have been given to it by the Lord. Pharaoh said, get out of here. And the people of Egypt gave all of their belongings, all of their precious jewels to the people of God and said, go. And the Bible says they vomited them out of the land. God wants to vomit you out of Egyptian limitations. He wants to vomit you out out of bondage to to, to an economy that does not love God. Oh, give me the Lord right now. Holy Ghost. We need righteous leaders handling the wealth of nations. You have your prayer assignment. Pray for righteous leadership to handle the wealth of the nations. Oh, Jesus. Can we see the kingdom of God? Coming to pass in the finance industry, I am by no means deceived. I know that in this day and time, we're not going to see the economy bow totally to God. But I can tell you this. There is a reset and a transition and a progressive shift and a worldwide change coming to the economy. And it'll be God's people, the people who are praying with their feet between their knees, looking for evidence of rain, who are going to be walking in an abundance They're going to be walking in a downpour. They're going to be walking in an open heaven, not just financial blessing, but spiritual. There's going to be a release. Hallelujah. The Lord is demanding balance and justice. He's not requiring socialism. Let's get rid of that temptation right now. I'm not talking about socialism. God is requiring righteousness with wealth. Oh, give me God. He is requiring righteousness with wealth. The wealthiest people of the world are only getting wealthier. I mean, by the to the, to the tune of billions of dollars wealthier, billions and billions and billions and billions, wealthier and wealthier. And they're exerting greater and greater influence on the world system. And God is trying to get us to a more fair balance in the economy. 
Listen to what my son read in devotion this morning. I knew it was God. It says in Proverbs chapter 10, beginning at verse two, we're going to read two verses. It says, treasures of wickedness profit nothing. If God wants to profit your nation, he also wants to t take the treasure of your nation and put it into the hands of the righteous. Listen to this. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. Oh, you've been praying for revival. You've been praying for awakening. Listen, it includes the economy. It includes taking the, the resources. The Bible says money answers all things. On this earth, there is a certain power and a move that comes that, that uses money. It's the power to what? Get wealth. The power to get wealth is in the hands of the righteous. And God wants to take it out of the hands of the wicked and put it into the hands of the righteous. Verse three, the Lord will not allow the righteous soul to famish, but he casts away the desires of the wicked. What does that mean? That at some point the wicked do think they're in charge, but God has to cast it away. At some point, it seems like the righteous are gonna famish, but God changes the situation. God is a God of righteousness and justice, and he has his eyes on you. You are worth more than many sparrows. Somebody needs encouragement right now. I prophesy Matthew 6 into your hearing that you are worth more than many sparrows. He says, God, uh, will he give you a stone when you ask for bread? Glory to God. He says, do not, do not be concerned about tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for today is the trouble thereof. You need what you need today. He's changing your mindset. He's preparing you to be a good steward because listen, the Lord ministered to me this today. Even rich people need to budget because why? You're going to have a whole bunch of money and then you're going to think, oh, I can spend $50,000 a day. No, no, no. You need to understand the principles of good financial stewardship. And you learn that by being what? Good steward over small. And then you can be brought into much. I want the Lord to have his way. God, have your way in the global economy. Holy, holy, teach us how to believe and have faith in you. Increase our faith when it looks like, oh, goodness, things are falling apart. No, 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 no. God's people are going to put blood on the door. Oh, Jesus, the blood is going to protect us from the flood. Hallelujah. I hear the Holy Ghost. The blood is going to protect us from the flood. Oh, God, where others are going to be under flood waters. Oh, up above their heads, God, in debt. <laughs> Oh, upside down in their homes, these kinds of things. The righteous are going to come and say, hey, I'll take that off your hands. Woo! I hear the Holy Ghost. I've seen it in the spirit and I'm proclaiming it into the natural. God is transferring wealth, influence, power and justice into the hands of his people. I want you to be found faithful. I want you to be found faithful. I want you to be found faithful faithful. God is faithful, but I want you to be found faithful. Because if you're found faithful over small things, the Bible says that you will be given more. Hallelujah. Father, we pray now in Jesus' name that you give us the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of you. Whew. We need to be in you. We need to be enveloped by your character, enveloped by your loving goodness, enveloped by your truth, enveloped by your spirit, enveloped by your humility, enveloped by your word enveloped, becoming living sacrifices, Lord, because we don't want to have our hearts change if we receive much. We want to continue to be undeserving servants, uh, serving you wherever you send us, God, with the right mindset and the right heart. I love you. I praise you for this reset, God. I pray that we pray into it, that uh, we press into the kingdom advancing. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. I pray that we start believing things that, are, that sound impossible. Nothing is impossible with you. In fact, we repent, God, for not believing that you can transfer wealth to the righteous. Oh, God, we, we repent. I declare houses, finance, debt freedom, generational blessing, generational wealth over your body. Why? Because you want us to operate as members of the body in the kingdom of God in every arena, influencing the culture as leaven and moving the earth with the resources that you have released into the earth. Teach us how to, to, to manage 
and to keep the, and steward and have dominion over the areas you've given us. This is my prayer, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I praise God. I praise God for this word. I praise God. I'm telling you, uh, this is a word to share. Uh, this is a word to share. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Uh, share it with people that are struggling and just have them begin to pray. This is happening. This is happening. And I pray that you receive every ounce of what God has for you. In the name of Jesus. Listen, if you want to learn more about this ministry to the Lord, uh, we call it Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries. Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries. We are those who are all about revival in the church and awakening in the world. Uh, we have a domestic and an international mission. We do outreaches and crusades in America uh, and revivals and crusades uh, overseas, uh, revivals in, in America as well. And uh, we have an open door to go to nations to go to nations all over the world. And uh, we're raising uh, tens of thousands of dollars if you can partner with us. We're looking for dedicated financial monthly partners to get us uh, to the tune of $50,000. And so uh, we're trusting God for that. Uh, we're scheduled to be in Lima, Peru in November in a different nation every month after that. And so we just wanna take the gospel and the power of God's spirit wherever he sends us. And um, yeah, so if you want to learn more about that, you can go to faithfireworldwide.com. You can actually get on our prophetic newsletter there as well and connect with our ministry and communications. Uh, you can find us on all the social media channels. And I just pray God um, ministers to you in this place because it's going to feel like another shaking. It is. It's going to feel like chaos and confusion. But for the people of God, it's an, it's an opportunity to be vomited out of bondage, meaning you're forcefully ejected. You're forcefully released from bondage. Hallelujah. I give God glory. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Blessings to you. Until next time. Bye.